Okay, apparently this is take four of my, um... See, I already started off with an um. That's that's why I'm doing take four of this... The live commentary of the little trash made late Pro Fool's Day thing that I had. Because the first time... The, the third time that I did this live commentary thing is just filled with a lot of uhs and mmms and ahs. Buddy, you are not Invader Zim. You can't just say... Eh, 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 can't just do that throughout the entire recording. But it definitely matches with the unscripted aspect of it. So I figure why not do take four of this live live-ish commentary of my April Fool's Day prank. Throughout the entire um I already started with another um, I gotta I gotta Maybe I shouldn't be too hard on myself for going um and mm and e and ah uh, and all that crap. So, my prank was to recreate an entire episode of The Little Trash Maid. Specifically, ep specifically the episode Wingmate Part 2, also known as the first physical appearance of Spencer. Not implied reference, which was the first... Not implied appearance, like the first Wingmaid. It's Wingmate Part 2. I feel like I've mentioned that already. The name of the, the title of the episode. I really gotta focus more. I have a bit of a headache for doing this for like the the, the past half an hour. Yeah, I'm I'm definitely a bit tired. Um I kinda wanna start off by I kinda wanna start off by describing the entire art style that I went for for the panels. The first panel was um, no sleep 666 or the I can't sleep art style. Very good art style to start out on because I started this at like, I started this April Fool's Day post at five in the morning. Yes, I have a terrible sleep schedule. I thank you for asking. I'm doing just great. Moving on. Panel two was lineless, a lineless art style. Not really a good lineless art style, I'd say. Panel 3 was a traditional sketch, a chicken scratch sketch. Um, if you missed it the first time, I'll place it right here so you can get a good look at it. Panel 4, I was originally going to go for a style reminiscent to Let Me Explain Studios, um, but I decided to skip out on that because I feel like I may have pissed off uh, Rebecca just a little bit by not shutting up about Nacy. It's probably a good thing I decide, I'm deciding on shutting up now on Nacy now because, hey, guess what I have? I have Ricky instead of, of Nacy. I have a better, not role model, but a better cartoon character to look up for and look into and all that crap. I even had this idea that I would do like mermaid scales as the background because if you look at Rebecca's videos, you'll notice that there's plenty of beautifully designed backgrounds. Uh, it's the only reason why I kept watching Let Me Explain Studios for like three years. I decided to stop just because of the Nacy thing. I feel like I've <coughs> pissed Rebecca off. And if she somehow finds this video, I'm sorry. I'm moving on. And as you could, t as you could tell, I have moved on. I'm now stalking Tidy. Which is a terrible thing to say. Never say that in a casual conversation. I decided to go for rubber hose instead, and you'll notice that Tidy is a lot bigger than Ricky and Spencer. I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean Spencer and Ricky. I'll explain why I said that later. Um, not, 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 not the Ricky and Spencer part specifically. I'm talking about the. No, I am, I am referring to the Ricky and Spencer part. I'm specifically talking about the thing with Tidy. Um, another um. You'll notice that Tidy is a lot bigger. That was a mistake on my end, but I'm retconning it with, Oh, it's actually the, the fact that the art style changes every single panel. And that is true, technically, but I don't I don't think anymore that it's like... Every art style is its own universe kind of thing. I think it's just a random happening that just so happens to be happening. A lot of happenings. Um, Panel 4 was Rubber Hose. Panel 5 was... A geometric polygon type lineless art style. I really like this panel in particular. Specifically Tidy. She just looks... 
I think she just looks good in, like, a lineless polygon art style. And I actually have this idea for a fan-made trash made comic that actually uses this art style. And I've already proved my worth that I can, you know, use this art style because I've drawn Hex, the leader of the flares, in the art style. And I think Hex looks pretty good in that. So yeah, love how panel 5 went out. Um, panel 6 was um, another um, I, I really gotta watch myself. Panel 6 was The Mighty 3, which is, I would argue, the first webcomic released by um, Steph or SOS2. In case you forgot who Steph or SOS2 was. Well, they're the same thing, they're the same person. Mighty 3 is a story about three human beings with supernatural powers that stop the Fourth World War. I can't, I can't believe they managed to stop the Fourth World War. I mean, Splatoon never did that shit. Yeah, the Mighty Three is that, at least in the second half, when we dive deeper into uh, the first, in the the war, when we dive into the war. Um, well, the first half of the story is about this desperate journalist named Eli, I think that's how you pronounce her name, who wants to keep her job as a book writer for the Red Mercury. But it's not been going so well for her because idea because her ideas are terrible. And if you like the little trash mate, then good news. I think the Mighty Three may just be the thing for you. So that's what panel six is supposed to be. And uh, you'll see in a bit that Tidy has a thought bubble next to her. And if you don't like the thought of Tidy actually being able to think like actual thoughts of words. If you hate the idea of the little trash made with words um, that don't include onomatopoeia. If you hate trash made with dialogue, I have some pretty bad news for you. And bad news is called the little trash made diving deeper. I would have just stuck with volume 1, but at some point I can imagine there being a volume 2. Or something. So there is that. What else can I say? Right, panel 7 was... Panel 7 is more close to the trash-made art style of today with the navy blue lines and... You know, the navy blue lines and... It's the more simple art style, I guess. I don't know how to describe the trash-made art style. It's pretty late for me right now. Panel 8 is another traditional sketch. Um, one of... One of two. And I like... I like the... I like the second traditional panel a lot more because it's more, it's just, I feel like it's right up my alley is the word I would use, phrase I would use. And uh, for a bit, for the Mighty 3 panel, I was going to give Tidy her <coughs> iconic 7-Eleven bag, but I decided to switch to 11-12. Not because I was afraid that I myself would get trademark issues or trademark replies or constraints from the actual 7-Eleven. It's just, I, I feel like Tidy's 11-12 bag is more iconic than her wearing a 7-Eleven bag. I know she started with a 7-Eleven bag, but she's had the 11-12 bag for a lot longer. I really do not know what else to add other than uh, what other weird, wacky stuff I had. So, the reason why... Um, Tidy realizes something is wrong on panel 6 is because I imagine an AU idea where Spencer was talking to Tidy about something, if anything, the dangers of eating plastic, like the single-celled fish, sing single-brain-celled fish she is. But the thing about Spencer is he dyed his hair black, which, uh, is... If you've seen the 1 million subscriber, 1 million follower Q&A that SOS2 did to celebrate the trash made hitting a milli. <laughs> a milli. This is weird. But yeah, if you've seen that, you'll know that one of Spencer's original designs was he was going to have black hair. And so I can imagine an alternate universe where um, Tidy looks at Spencer with black hair and think, Oh, I must be talking to Ricky. This guy seems familiar. Before the actual Ricky comes in um, on a bike and then Tidy gets confused. And then the next day, Spencer... No, no. The next day, Ricky um, changes his color to so it kind of looks like Spencer's. And then Tidy gets confused even more because she doesn't know who she's talking to anymore. And then they both get the idea, which is kind of this comic that I had. What if... We prank Tidy into thinking that she is reliving a memory. 
And we also swapped roles. I think the swapping roles is what really sold it. And I had this... I had a lot more... I have a lot more ideas to it. Um, simply with... Uh, simply with Tidy um, being... Having like some sort of... Ex almost having some sort of existential crisis or something. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I had a lot more ideas. Speaking of ideas, I did also have another idea for a trash made AU called The Little Trash Punk. It's essentially going to be... Okay, it's not essentially going to be because I don't know if I'm ever going to continue it. But one of my... My idea is imagine another alternate universe where Tidy suddenly becomes a steampunk enthusiast and creates all sorts of interesting contraptions and trinkets using all the metal, rusted metal and garbage in the sea. I kind of like that idea just as much as the idea of Ricky and Spencer pulling a prank on Tidy and all that fine jazz. And that's about all I have. I hope to God when I replay this, there's not so much ooms and ahs like I'm friggin' Invader Zim going, eh! It's not like an old man when I say that. But yeah, that was my live commentary. Um, late Pro Fools, which is stupid to say now. And that's all that the Curse of M has. Take care. Mm -hmm.